Sister Lucy Lesbia Lady. I'm the family mother and abbess of the Holy Orders and City Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence here in Las Vegas. Everybody has a story, and tonight you're going to hear my story. Um, I was diagnosed with AIDS in 1991, and so I was born and raised in a small town in Eastern Oregon with my mother, my father, and my older sister. At a very young age, my, my mother and my father were divorced. My father was in Houston, so my mother got my sister and I out. And we were a pretty much a normal family. My father was killed when I was seven years old. And my mom pretty much raised my sister and I by herself. And pretty much had a pretty normal life. My mom gave me everything I wanted. Pretty much grew up, you know, in an average little town. I could get a little idea of how small it was where I grew up. When I was in the fourth grade, I went to a one room school, a one room school building with four six kids in the full school, coming my sister and I. So pretty small. Everybody knew everybody's business. And I was just a little bit different, so you know, I wanted to get out of there. <laughs> and so, at the beginning of my junior year, I moved to Seattle, Washington. And um, started my life. My mom, my mom had this gentleman, and they were getting ready to move around, and I didn't want to move around. So I went to Washington to finish school. So my junior year in high school, I was the captain of my gymnastics team, the swim team, going to school and living on my own. I graduated high school, got a job. My job transferred me to California. My parents were here in Las Vegas, so I stopped and visited. I realized that I got homesick, that I missed my family. And so I went and opened up a few stores in California, came back. I didn't like California, went back to Seattle, and I realized I needed to be around my family. My family was here, so I moved here to Las Vegas. And that's pretty much where I started my life. I met someone, got into a relationship, didn't last, got into another relationship, and I thought this was the one that I was going to be for the rest of my life. I met that one person. Well, two years into that relationship, I got sick. I got a very bad cold. It, this cold wasn't going away. So I decided to go to the doctor see what was going on. Well, they told me I had bronchitis. I said, okay, I have to deal with that. They said, well, we're going to run a bunch of blood work on you, your mind. I said, no, not at all. There's a lot of HIV tests in there. I said, okay. I didn't think anything of it. I didn't know much about sex. We didn't talk about it. I was raised with my mom and my, my older sister. And when I learned about sex, it was from my older sister's friends. So I went to the doctor, they gave me antibiotics, did the blood work, and all that kind of stuff, went home. So I was fine. Well, the doctor called and told me to come get my test results. I had to go. I was getting ready to go see my mom up in Washington for Christmas. I didn't, I didn't want to hear what the doctor had to say. So I went up there, came back. I had a dozen messages on my phone tell me to come in and see what the doctor had to say. I still didn't go. Well, I decided I better go see what's going on. So I went to the doctor, walked into his office, and handed me a piece of paper. He told me that I was HIV positive, and there was nothing that he could do for me. And I had to go down to the health district and go through that process. I said, okay. Now I walked out of his office, went down to the health district, and went through that process. Having them drill me, asking me all of my behaviors, what I was going through, what I was doing, who I was doing with. I only had one partner before that. And my current partner. So now I'm HIV positive. I'm walking out of there. I'm wondering what am I going to do? Who am I going to tell? Uh, my sister was the first one that I told. And her reaction, she got mad at me. How could you? So we got past that. And then she asked me if I was going to tell my mom. I said, no. I 
So I, I don't think mom needs to know about it. It's fine for her to know. She said, okay. So now it's time for me to sell my partner. So, you know, that story kind of gets mixed up because I've blocked it out. You know, denial is a big thing, you know, you forget about things. So, I just had my partner down and told him that I was HIV positive as well. Same reaction. We'll get through this. Well, we got through it, but it was just me getting through it. I went to the doctor's appointment by myself. Everything that I did was by myself. I was with a partner, but I did everything by myself. So, I was very asymptomatic for a long time. Going to work, taking handfuls of pills all the time. People ask me what I'm doing. I'm taking vitamins. Well, 1999 came around, and I was trapped doing a bunch of different drugs. Norvir was one of the drugs that they put me on. They put me in the hospital for the first time. So now I'm in the hospital, and I think it's time to kind of get me out. It's time to, my mom's coming down to visit me. Well, it's time to tell my mom. I tell the doctors and the nurses my mom doesn't know anything, so we're going to keep my secret a secret. I appreciate it. They did. So now I'm home and I have to tell my mom that I mentioned the positive. So one morning I call her into my bedroom. I tell her to call, call up on my bed. I gotta talk to her. So she calls up on my bed and she looks at me and I start crying. And she asked me what was wrong. And I told her that I had some checking positive. And then she started crying. And then I started crying. And she said, where did I go wrong? And I said, you didn't go wrong anyway. But I was the one that was doing the wrong things. The choices that I made out there put me in this position. So I got through that. I kept working, kept changing my medications. So I found out that I was going to college. So I've been in and out of hospital time and time again. Time and time. Struggling and struggling. Um, I went on a vacation with a bunch of friends at San Francisco for day five one time. Well, when I came home from day five, I ended up in the hospital with a 106 temperature. They didn't think I was going to make it. Well, I survived, as you see. And, well, then my doctor says, you have some choices to make. You need to decide if you want to live or if you want to die. I said, well, I want to live. Well, you need to stop working. Uh, you know, I had a pretty good job in the gaming industry. And I was 38 years old. And now I have to end my career. I chose to live. So I went on disability. And through that process, I tried to kill myself four different times because I didn't think I was worthy enough to live. I had nothing to show for, nothing to work for. <clears throat> Who was I? Just somebody walking around with AIDS. <clears throat> well, I'm on to the rescue again. 